Okay, we're back at it again. Welcome to another episode of Jamie and Julia. I'm Jamie, and with me, of course, as always, is Julia Child. Oh! <laughs> bon appétit. For the uninitiated, I'm learning how to cook and trying to get better. So I have this cookbook here, Mastering the Art of French Cooking from Julia Child, and I'm just going through it and cooking up a storm. I've never done any of these recipes before, so I'm just doing them all for the first time. It could be challenging, it could be difficult, we never know. Now today we're gonna to be making la tarte tatin. La tarte, la tarte tatin. It's hard for me to roll those R's, Canadian boy. Um, and not a French Canadian boy, I didn't pay attention in French class. Um, I had to take it when I was in Br La tarte tatin, upside down apple tart. This is an especially good tart if your apples are full of flavor. Oh, mine will be full of flavor. Dessert tarts. French dessert tarts are like French entree tarts and quiches. I made the quiche. They are open faced and stand supported only by their pastry shells. They should be beautiful to look at, especially the fruit tarts, which lend themselves to the glittering arrangements of rosettes and overlapping circles. Oh, how about that? Overlapping circles. Now similar to a quiche, I need to make a pastry crust, except this one is a sweet short crust pastry. Quiche was like a savory pastry crust, so that was like more salt, less sugar. The dessert pastry crust is gonna be more sugar, less salt. Capiche? Okay, whoa. We're using the silver fox. Silver fox. Usually I make the pastry dough with my hands, but Julia says, you know, if you got one, use it. So we're gonna use it and try out this method. Five ounces of plain flour. It ta I put my sugar in what used to be a pickle jar, and now the sugar smells like pickles. Tablespoon and a half of uh, pickled sugar, and an eight teaspoon of salt. I made that quiche pastry and it turned out great. Um, following along to the methods in this book. Um, so you ask yourself, why would you, you know, throw a, a, a wrench into this thing and, and use the stand mixer now? And it's because of reasons. So if you're gonna do this method, you gotta use the right attachment. Julia recommends the old paddle attachment. Oops. Let me first just get that all mixed together. Terrific, that was easy. So four ounces of butter, which is roughly 4.8, 4.4. Four, I'm just cutting this butter up into like little slices here. It needs to be cold, right? Get over here. Butter goes onto the counter and then into the bowl. And then I'm gonna mix this up until all the butter has like, it's covering all the little granules of flour. <laughs> so it doesn't take long. I, if you over mix this, you're screwed. It's on like a very low speed. It's been like only a minute so far and it's almost done. So uh, Julia says that this is a better method than using your hands because the bowl stays cold. So don't play around too much with the dough. I need to add roughly four tablespoons of ice water. Ugh, just do it this way. Let's mix that in. Okay, stop the presses. That's, that's, that's as far as you take it. Quickly combine it and then you're done. And you, my friend, are excused. You know, from all the pastry doughs I've made so far, this one looks just like the other ones that I did with my hands, so, um, yeah. All right, some flour on the work surface and hi-ya. Every little piece of this dough should be moist, which it is. Okay, and I don't need to knead it. What I'm gonna do is just form it into a ball. Okay, in some plastic wrap. And this is gonna hang out in the fridge for two hours. So four pounds of crisp cooking or eating apples. Okay, so some sort of baking apple. Something that doesn't like turn into mush when you, when you heat it up in the oven. These are, um, how do you do that thing? Um, these are pink lady apples. And I probably bought way too many. Core them, don't have something that I can core them with, so I will just peel them and, excuse me. Slice her up. It says an eighth of an inch thick. 
it's almost half an inch. An eighth of an inch, which is really thin, so I'm gonna kinda do that instead, which is more of a quarter of an inch. Folklore says that if I cut up half a lemon, squeeze that into the bowl with my sliced apples, along with some lemon zest, roll the apples around and they won't go brown. Cool? Practice your knife skills, don't forget. Make sure to keep mixing those apples around in the lemon juice. Just keep peeling and peeling. Four pounds seems like an excessive amount of apples. Who am I to say? Woo! Took a while. Took a while. I used every single apple I had and I've only made it to three and a half pounds. I need four pounds, but I mean, Honestly, I think that's gonna be more than enough, probably double the amount that I need, and wait for the apples and all the excess juices that come out of the apples to go down to the bottom of the bowl. So in the fridge for like an hour. So that lemon trick works wonders. That's the first time I've ever done that before, so it's a big deal for me. I totally thought that these would turn brown. And if Julia is correct, there should be juice at the bottom of the bowl. And there is not, so. Okay, no big deal. Stay open. Butter the baking dish. Oh, we're already there? What does Julia use as a baking dish? Oh, a frying pan. Uh, accumulating too much stuff. So I'm gonna use a cast iron skillet as my baking dish. So I need an ounce of softened butter. Butter the baking dish heavily on the base. I'm just gonna get in there and get my hands dirty. Oh, in hers and her show, when she lifts it up, it just goes and she's like, oh, 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 oh dear. Well, that's a shame. This is a good lesson for everyone because when you're serving this, this could happen. I had to take a break from making cakes on my show because it's just too many cakes. And I get into the French cooking and it's just like butter all day, every day. Julia says that if you're on a diet, the tart tatin is not for you. Sprinkle half the sugar in the base of the dish. Half the sugar is, that smells like pickles. Do I have enough sugar? Three ounces. I have lots of sugar into the base of this dish. I need to arrange these apples in an overlapping circles. Do I start in the center or do I start and work my way in? I'll start outwards. So how do I do up the center piece? Kind of just similar type of deal, I think. Yeah. Boom. Sprinkle with a third of melted butter. Three ounces of melted butter. One third of the melted butter. That's one third. Repeat with a layer of half the remaining apples. Question is, do I have to do a pattern for that? Why would you need to do a pattern if you're never gonna see it? This is an upside down cake, so I have to imagine it upside down, and I don't think I'm ever gonna see this middle layer, so I don't think it matters how neat and tidy. Cover my bases, though, I'm just gonna arrange it as neatly as I can. Half the remaining butter, final layer of apples. We've already reached the pinnacle of this pan. This is like the bottom of this thing, so I don't know how much of this I'm gonna see. So just get them on, but kind of like flat so that the pastry can go on top. I was totally right about leftover apples because I just have, I hope you like apples. Final layer of butter. The remaining sugar goes on top of that. 190 degrees Celsius, 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Roll out the pastry into a thickness of 1 8 inch. Flour the surface. Friendly neighborhood rolling pin. Julia Child's rolling pin is like this. And it's just like a nice, beautiful wooden, it used to be a broom handle. Mine, well, she would probably say something. Roll from the center out, and rotate, center out. Give it a rotate, 1 8 inch thick, eh? And this goes on top, allowing the edges to fall against the inside of the dish. Okay, so it needs to be the size of this baking dish. The inside edge. Cut four or five holes about an eighth inch long in the top of the pastry to allow cooking steam to escape. I need to pause because Julia Child does something different in the video I'm watching of her make this. So I kind of want to follow that because there's a more interesting method there that I want to kind of do first. This onto a burner. I want everything to start caramelizing. I want it to start bubbling. So on high heat for five minutes. Into the oven for 45 minutes to an hour. But because it just did that thing on the stove, I think 45 minutes. Bottom shelf. 
I think I'm gonna turn the stove back on. So I gotta make sure that everything is caramelized in there. So um, a little tip from the video of Julia Child making these and not the cookbook itself is um, when she takes it out of the oven, which I'm gonna do now, whoo -hoo -hoo, puts it on the stove top just to get everything on the bottom like caramelized. So the idea is when I flip this over, it's gonna hold its shape. That's why I'm being super cautious right now. Um, I don't, don't do that. Whoa. I wish I didn't have a stupid oven mitt on. Couple casualties. I feel like I can just take these off, put them back on, right? Don't worry about why it happened, just fix it. I think that looks better. Before I take a bite, Julia says, you know what'd be great with this? Some creme fraiche, but you know what I think would be great with it? Some vanilla ice cream. If I'm finding a word that's gonna sum everything up, it's exquisite. That is exquisite. When you get some of that sugar that's been caramelized onto the apples with some of that pie crust, like that, as a perfect bite. The pie crust underneath is just flaky pie crust. I love the simplicity about this. It's just like sugar, butter, apples, pie crust. Done. Eat it, enjoy it, rave about it. Simplicity makes it complex. And add a little vanilla ice cream to it. I'm telling you, it's the right, it's the right call. This was Jamie and Julia, bon appetit. See you soon.